Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra Matteson and today we're going to be discussing volunteering. Okay, so a big part of what I like to do and kind of um, what I started doing before I wrote the books was volunteering in South Africa and more specifically wildlife conservation based volunteering. Okay, and um, if you've been watching me for a while, you would know that I've volunteered at Care for Wild and most recently and beyond Pinda, Pinda Private Game Reserve out in KZN. So yeah, um, I'm not saying that I have the most experience in volunteering, but I do have some experience under my belt. And, um, and also, I don't think it's... Um, how do I say, it's not a competition who's done the most volunteering, right? Um, at the end of the day, it's about giving back and making a difference for wildlife. And even if you only do it once in your life, that's amazing, you know? Um, it's kind of how do you want, what's your little bit that you want to do in the world to make it a better place, right? Um and it's about what you can afford. And this is kind of why I wanted to talk about this today um, as a different topic. Um, from, I know I've talked about it a lot, guys, so yeah, it's not really that different, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically earlier this year, um, I was interviewed and we talked a little bit about volunteering and I've got to say, like, I, I understand that if you're coming from overseas, you've also got that expense of flying um, over. And then, you know, you don't have your own car here. So you might have to pay for transport to the sanctuary or, or whatever, like, you know, stuff like that. But I think that there's a bit of a misconception in that, yes, there are game reserves very close by to the cities. Um but a lot of the places where you can volunteer are quite far away, especially if you're living in Cape Town or, or Durban or like I'm talking about like the city centers. So if you like in Durban city center or Cape Town, you know, um, and Joburg um, or Pretoria, sanctuaries like um, Cape for Wild um, and places to volunteer like at Pinda, that's quite far away. Like... <laughs> And I drive the speed limit. I don't, I, well, I like to drive, you know, there and then, yeah. And um, so preferably not under, but obviously if you've got a truck in front of you guys, what can you do? But um, <laughs> um, so driving to Care for Wild, that's like about a, a six hour trip for me um, from Joburg. And that's because I generally volunteer by myself. And... I like to take rest and stop and have lunch um, so that I get I arrive safe you know I don't want to have a <laughs> an accident or anything and also I believe the road trip is a part of the journey part of the adventure you know um, I don't want to be completely stressed out by the time I arrive there I want to basically unpack the car and get volunteering um, and yeah, like, well, as soon as I'll let me. <laughs> um, definitely like to hit the hit the ground running. So, um, yeah. Um, so it's quite far. And Pinda, I took two days to get to Pinda. And that's because I'd never traveled that route. And also they had the floods, like, literally the month before. And a friend of mine told me that there was, like, no road. Um, turns out there was a road. So... I, I arrived safely and I think just taking the time to get there because it was also new um, I think that people like I get scared like everyone else when it's something completely new and in order to ease myself in and face that fear of this new journey um, I was embarking on by myself <laughs> um, I just took two days you know, I took it easy. Um, but would I take two days again? Maybe not. Um, and now that I know the route, um, I'm more comfortable. You know what I mean? But anyway, 
So places aren't necessarily on your doorstep in just because you live in South Africa. And um, I guess another, I mean, some people still believe that um, what you, you ride an elephant to work or I don't know, have lions walking around the suburb, but they're not completely wrong because in the urban areas you do find wildlife and you do get um i'm very i'm digressing here guys but yeah i mean we at my mom's house she has a genet um which is wildlife um that comes into her garden um at night and um it's been known to have porcupines and all of that um walking because we've got um rivers that run from like the cradle of humankind through johannesburg and stuff like that and they use those natural roots that we've kept because you know you can't really you know not a good idea to build too close to a river um Anywho's, I'm really digressing, guys. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, it's so. As much as we have wildlife in the urban area, we don't have like lions. Okay, as soon as we put up fences, these fences separated people from the animals, and these fences also created a disconnect quite substantially in this in in I would say access to that wildlife once those fences went up as well which is uh so the fences are good in a sense of that human wildlife conflict has now been there's like that assistance there um keeping the wildlife away from the people so that there's no um conflict there but the issue is is that to go to a game reserve can be very expensive and it's a luxury that most South Africans and the majority of South Africans can't afford especially private game reserves um, national game reserves are a bit more accessible but it's still seen as more of a luxury you know like would you rather put food on the table or spend reserve you know money on the reserve fees to go into a Kruger National Park for example um, you're going to put food on the table first so there is that disconnect as well and volunteering even though it is cheaper to volunteer than go stay at a private game reserve it obviously isn't a cheap safari that is very important to know guys because when you're volunteering you're there to perform a specific function okay as part of the conservation efforts of that game reserve or sanctuary so you in some places are there to do physical labor and work other places you're there to monitor and assist in other ways um and um so not everywhere is a hands-on experience. It really depends on the sanctuary or reserve that you go to and where you're volunteering. And obviously each of the different um, volunteering places would obviously let you know what kind of experience you can get when you're there. Um, also through other volunteers' testimonials and stuff like that. So if you're interested in, in volunteering in South Africa, which I highly, highly suggest, I mean getting to see up close like pangolins uh, rhino um it's just incredible um i wouldn't change it for the world and you know i basically work at a normal nine to five um job which helps me to fund my volunteering that i do and i also use all not all my annual leave but a majority of my annual leave actually goes towards um this this passion of mine <laughs> um and the conservation stuff that i want to do um and yeah the people that i want to support and and all of that sort of thing um so i hope that i've not completely confused you and i've kind of highlighted to you that just because 
I'm in South Africa doesn't make it necessarily easier for me to volunteer. You know, it's still, it is quite expensive for me to volunteer. Not everyone can afford um, not only the time, um, the time of work, but also the amount of money. But there are amazing places to volunteer, guys. So many different programs. Programs where you get to work with wild dog, where you get to work with cheetah, where you get to work with um, elephants, where you get to work with um, the rhino, the pangolins. Guys, honestly, if you are passionate about conservation and passionate about Africa's wildlife, we are here. <laughs> we are here. But we understand that flights are expensive and all of these things. Um, but don't think that we it's it's so much easier for us because it it is hard for us to also do it. Um we're in we're pretty much in the same boat, but the journey's a bit um takes a little bit less time for us to get there, I guess. Um but we also got the fuel problem, the <laughs> petrol prices. <laughs> But enough complaining about that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to put some links to the places where I volunteered and then places that I also support. Um, because recently through my wild dog um, uh, poetry art piece that I've done, the Wildlife Act guys also have an amazing um, volunteering program and that's where the wild dog comes in. So yeah, definitely on my bucket list of where I want to volunteer. Um but yeah, I miss the rhinos. So it's like care for wild. Um, and then Pinda was absolutely amazing, guys. Honestly, the experience was incredible. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as I know where I'm volunteering next, I'll definitely let you know. But yeah, um, you don't have to volunteer to, to do your little bit. There's other ways that you can do, play your part in saving wildlife, um, in conserving nature and conserving the wildlife for the next generation. You know, there's other ways that you can play your part. Don't feel that if you don't have an enormous amount of funds to, you know, to do something you can't. Um, every little bit does count, guys. Um, and just figure out your way. Just one, one thing. You just do one thing. Don't don't feel overwhelmed. Um, this has been a journey for me and I only started volunteering in 2019. So don't be hard on yourselves. But if you are able to financially, you have the time, do it. Do it. You. It's amazing. It's honestly so, so, so amazing and rewarding as well. So thank you guys. Thank you for following my journey, for listening to my journey and me babbling on. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you guys. Okay. Bye.